All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Cyrus Young, and we're going to be talking about continuation passing style. Uh, so, what is a continuation? A continuation saves the state execution state of a program by passing a continuation, usually in the form of a callback to the parameter of the function. This callback will be used to pass in a function to let the program know what to do in a certain case, such as a success case or a failure case. So, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, we have uh, an example of a function that's a non-continuation and a, uh, a function that does use continuations. So this first example here, define foo1, uh, is an example of one that doesn't use a continuation. So as you can see, um, it does a an operation x times 2 uh, plus 1, and then that just returns out. So this, this will return to some unknown location, um, whereas if you look down here, uh, we have define foo, which is going to, instead of returning uh, some uh, calculated result in this function, it's going to pass this x times 2 to the continuation function c, um, which we defined uh, previously. So these two functions should do the same thing here. Um, the only difference is that in, this in the continuation case, we pass it to a continuation function, um, which is passed in as a parameter of the argument as uh, defined earlier. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run this, um, and they should come out to be this, the same. So as you can see here, uh, three and three. So um, they they did the same exact operations, but one used success or excuse me continuations, uh, and the other did not. All right. So we're going to move on to a little bit more complicated uh, example here. Uh, so this, this is the, uh, a function which basically um, does 2 times x uh, and then plus y. And so this is going to be our non-continuation uh, style uh, function. And all, it, all it's going to do is that 2 times x plus y. So we want to make this function, but we want to do it using a continuation. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, uh, just to keep it simple, we're going to define our continuation function to return its parameter. Um, and then we're going to use two helper functions, add and mall, and they're both going to uh, return the continuation of x plus y or x times y. So in our 2x plus y prime function, which is our function that uses continuations, uh, we take in parameters x, y, and c, just like before. Um, but instead, we're going to return our result to the mall function, and we're going to pass it 2x and then we're going to pass an anonymous function called lambda v. Um, and so to make it a little bit simpler, you can vi visualize this whole highlighted section as the c um, that's re that we're going to be passing to this mall. So this c right here is going to take the lambda v, which is the anonymous function, um, and then the parameters are going to be the v, y, and c themselves. So the first thing that's going to happen is we pa pass it to mall, the 2 is going to go into the x, x is going to go into the y, uh, and then this anonymous, this, excuse me, this, yeah, this anonymous function is going to be passed in as the next continuation. So when we return, or when we uh, use this small function, we take that x and that y, which is the 2 and the x, and we pass it to this anonymous lambda function. So when we do that, um, it's going to take, uh, this v is going to capture this 2, 2x, two in this two times, or excuse me, x times y right here, and then that's going to be passed in through this continuation uh, lambda function, which is going to call that. Then going to call add, which is going to take that two x as the v, uh, add it to y, and then pass it through c uh, in this add function right here. Uh, so we have again the non-continuation style function, passing style function, uh, and then the continuation passing style function on the bottom here, 2x plus y prime. Um, as you can see, they take in the same parameters, um, and they should return the same result. So we'll save that, and then over here, we'll call this. Oh, excuse me. All right, and then you can see that they both print out a value of 5. So that was a successful uh, continuation example. Um, and next is Rasmi, and she will be explaining uh, Scala versus Python continuations for you. Hi guys, I'm Rasmi. Now I'm going to like give you more example of continuation. 
Um, so now in the beginning, um, I would like to tell you that, I would like you to remember that what lambda is again. Lambda is basically an anonymous function that we use in Python. Now let's move into the another um, difficult example that we did in the lab six for continuation. So in this example, we're basically um, calling a continuation in, in calling a continuation when the list is empty and um, when the list does not have zero. So um, I want you guys to understand that what continuation basically is. So um, our main main goal is that um, we want to we want to calculate only if it's possible to calculate. So we are not passing continuation here because um, we don't really want to calculate. We already know the answer in this situation is going to be zero because anything multiplied to zero is always going to be zero. So um, that's the main thing. So when you want to calculate is when we have something in our list. Um, so um, so like. So like I have a Python version of the code same how we have uh, defined here. We're calling this mal function and passing an anonymous function which basically uh, multiplies the head with every time with the ACC and does the tail recursion here. So let's go look into the Python code now. So this is my Python code, um, Python code. So um, what I have basically done is it's the same format. I have a mole list defined inside the mole list. I have a mole defined. Um, now my empty list case is here and my zero case if any of the head of the list is zero. So the only difference you can, you have probably noticed is that I have called lambda here. Instead, I had called ACC here. So, uh, like I mentioned before, lambda is an anonymous function here. So, but it's actually doing the same thing. This code is basically doing the same thing as Scala code. So I'm calling the, I'm calling the head of the list and multiplying with the ACC, which is this anonymous function taking ACC, and I'm reducing my list one by one, like the tail recursion here. So let's try and compile if this works or not. does work and it's printing out six, nice. So here also, um, I have given it a list of one, two, three, and it's giving us the answer of six. So I have tried zero and it's giving the answer of zero. So let's try to give it a zero value here. So now it gives you zero. So yeah, so the main takeaway from this, uh, video is that uh, our main, f what continuation is that you have to do the calculation when absolutely necessary to do it. So when you actually have to do the calculation, you want to calculate it. If not, we just don't want to calculate it. Now, Isan is going to talk more about how, uh, what are the applications of continuation will be. Hey guys, this is Isan Karimi. Um, now we, we've talked about uh, what continuation is, we want to move on to its applications. Um, continuation is uh, very popular in implementing web servers, and that's because with continuation we could add state to HTML. And its use is that um, with adding state to HTML, we could, for example, when um, um, when a user tries to open a new website and new web pages one after each other, and if they wanted to, for example, bookmark one web page in the middle, they could always go back and start from that web page again. And um, there are also other uses for um, for continuation. For example, um, in implementing generators for Python and Icon, um, continuation is used, and also. Um, in um, long jump and library long jump in C, which is um, mostly used to um, handle exceptions. Um, continuation is used for its implementation. Um, there are also many other uses that we don't um, we don't have the time to talk about it in this video. Um, all right, that's it guys for this um, project. Thank you very much for watching. And